Do you want to learn about the fascinating history of the name Jehovah from Jehovah's Witnesses? If you're interested in that, this video is for you. I hope you enjoy and have a pleasant, wonderful day. All right, with that out of the way, today we're going to learn about the name Jehovah, where it comes from, why they have it, why they use it, what kind of arguments do Jehovah Witnesses make about the name Jehovah? So, one of the most common arguments that I see come from Jehovah Witnesses when discussing the name Jehovah is they claim that this is the one true name of the Almighty God. And one of the reasons why Jehovah Witnesses do not use other Bibles is because they are claiming that other Bibles had removed God's name and they don't have Jehovah in there. Now, I want us to think about that. Have you ever heard a Jehovah Witness tell you the reason they don't use other Bibles is because the name Jehovah isn't in those other Bibles and it's disrespectful? I want you to think about that for a moment and think, have you ever heard that or did you ever use that kind of argument when you were a Jehovah Witness? Because if you did, you're going to want to see the rest of this video. In order to properly understand what we're going to talk about, you would need to go back in time and use the aid to Bible understanding that was produced by the Jehovah Witnesses. This version of this book is the one that you need in order to see what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you that there is a problem with the logic of Jehovah Witnesses saying that Jehovah is God's one true name. Not only is that not true, in the past Jehovah Witnesses admitted that this is not God's name. If you look this book up into their database now, you will not find it, and you will not find it for this one reason. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to open up, obviously, the page 884 and 885. So let's start off with 884, and let's take a look at what we see. Okay, so look real carefully. You'll see, reading the Hebrew Scriptures in the original language, the Jewish reader substituted either and I don't know how to pronounce this, but this is the, the Adahalim Lord or Elohim God. So you, the audience, right there know that they are using a substitution. So that means that they were substituting, so they were creating something. Reading the Hebrew scriptures in the original language, the Jewish reader substituted either Adonai, Lord or Elohim God, rather than pronouncing the divine name represented by the Tetragrammaton. This is seen from the fact that the vowel pointing came into use in the second half of the first millennium. The Tetragrammaton, this is seen from the fact that when vowels pointing comes into use in the second half of the first millennium, CE, the Jewish copyrightist vowels for either Adahim or Elohim into the transgrammaton, evident, evidently to warn the reader to say those words in place of pronouncing the divine name. Okay, so I want the audience to be aware that I'm obviously using screenshots. I don't have the book in front of me. I used to own it, but I don't have it anymore. So unfortunately, I don't have a copy. And the really interesting thing about this, this book is pretty expensive. So if I wanted to purchase it, I'm looking anywhere between $30 to $60, which is pretty funny because... If you know anything about Jehovah's Witness literature, if you would have been doing this stuff five years ago, that book probably would have been anywhere between five to eight dollars. Witness literature has skyrocketed in value. All right, now a Spanish monk in 1270 named Raymondus Martini is the one who came up with this inappropriate translation. The mistake of the translation is even said in this book. Alright, let's attempt to read some of this. 
uh, uh, copies of the Septuagint, the Catholic devoid translation of 1906 in English based on the Thalgate, therefore does not contain the divine name, while the King James Version 1611 uses Lord or God in all capitals to represent the... So as you can see, in order to construct this name Jehovah, they were taking titles from other words that are derived from the language and then combining them in order to form this malformed name, which we refer to as Jehovah. So Jehovah is a collection of different words combined to form a new word, which doesn't make really any sense whatsoever. So when we try to break that down and look at it, what we'll see is that what they're trying to tell you is that there is a way that you speak it and there is a way that you write it and that those things were separate. And so they're trying to combine the two together in order to come up with God's name. I don't, I don't truly understand why or how they're doing this. This is done within the manuscripts. So something I want to point out, though, is when you go back in history and you look at the New Testament, no New Testament scripture ever shows this as being God's name, ever. So as of 2023, there are over 5,000 known manuscripts that have been reviewed for the New Testament. Not even one of them ever said the name Jehovah, ever. Oops, it looks like the Holy Spirit messed up on that one. Sorry, Jehovah. You're out. So you'd think this conversation is over, but it's not. So the really interesting thing is, like, these people go door to door when they don't have an answer. What is the answer they always tell you to go to? Why don't you go to joejw.org? Because that's where all the answers are. Well, you can look up Raymond Martini, and you can see things he's mentioned there, but what you'll find out is that that book with his name in it and the mention on page 885 on that particular book are gone. It's not in their archives. So how am I supposed to get that answer from jw.org if it's been removed? Then I'd ask them, why did you guys remove it? Why don't you want people to know that information? Because the second edition of that, they removed it. Interesting, huh? So now you know the where, the why, the how, and the who did this. You have all the answers, and they've been there in front of you the entire time, but you didn't even know. And you're welcome. Yes, every single one of you Jehovah Witnesses using the name Jehovah, you now know that that's not God's real name. You're welcome. I guarantee you, none of you are going to tell anyone this. The only people who are going to discuss this is the ex-Jehovah Witness community because you're going to lie and act like you've never seen this. But you think I'd be done, but I'm not. There's even more evidence to support what I'm telling you. And that's the fact that I have at least generalized understanding of what English language is like. And anyone who speaks English should immediately know that there is a problem. So, Jehovah starts with a J. The J is the problem, because the J sound is only four to 500 years old. So, here's a question to ask someone who comes to your door, or to ask a Jehovah Witness, or to ask an elder. I understand that the letter J is relatively new, perhaps four to 500 years old, but since there has long been important names that begin with the J, such as Jesus, Joseph, Justine, etc., and which, which predate indoctrination of a specific letter, does that mean that the J sound predates the letter? Or were such famous names spelled and pronounced differently? Now, I already know the answer. They are pronounced and the sounds were different. They're not the J sound, and they are not J's. 
anyone who knows anything about manuscripts or ancient languages or ancient Hebrew knows that this is not correct. Any biblical scholar you talk to already knows the answer to this question. Why do Jehovah Witnesses, who are the experts with Holy Spirit telling them and directing them, why did the Holy Spirit give them a fake name? Because remember, Jehovah Spirit was directing all this to Jehovah's people. So Jehovah's Witnesses, where did that come from? Who directed it? Because it obviously didn't come from the God of the Bible, because the God of the Bible would not have directed you to a mistake on purpose. Do you see what I'm getting at? So that's right, folks. The J sound is the number one reason that Jehovah cannot be the holy name of God in the Bible. So not only do we know who the monk was, who made the translation. We not only do we know that, but we know why he made the translation, what he did to create the translation, and we also know that Jehovah Witnesses, so Jehovah's Witnesses, when they created that name of Jehovah's Witnesses, they did it knowing that the name is not true. And when their members go around telling you that your Bible removed the name of God and is disrespectful, they know that they are lying to you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? They know for a fact that they are lying to you. Because I know that everyone in this generation, my parents, your parents, and you, read that book and were aware of it, and were taught that book. They know this already. And I guarantee you, if you talk to them about it, do not mention that you know this. Let them lie to you. And then when they're done lying, then you hit them with the facts. And you will blow them away. Because you will do something that they didn't expect. Because they don't count on you to be intelligent. They don't expect intelligence. When they see it, they don't know how to operate against it because they live with deception. So now that you have an understanding of how Jehovah Witnesses, Jehovah's Witnesses will deceive you. So when Jehovah's Witnesses are deceiving you, I want you to think about other organizations other media that try to feed you things and then try to tell you that they never told you what they told you. Be very careful with who's teaching you what because if they don't have the data and they're not consistent, they're not a good teacher. And I hope this is a lesson that you've learned. Jehovah's Witnesses are not good teachers. They can't tell you the truth because they don't want to tell you the truth. And if they can't tell you the truth, why are you counting on them to give you spiritual food? So go to jw.org, type in Raymond Martin. This is what you're going to see. Not forgetting the name of God. Here's a really interesting thing in here. If you pay very, very close attention and you read the article, they will tell you that God's name was in the manuscripts. That is not true. Here's the interesting part. In the same article, they tell you the correct name of God is Yahweh, not Jehovah. And if that's not shocking enough, they know that's not the correct name. And they did it because the other name is more popular with the masses. So they did it for PR reasons. How disrespectful can you be? So not only do Jehovah Witnesses know that Jehovah's name is not Jehovah, that Yahweh is the correct way to say it, they know who did it, they know what books he wrote, and they know that the book that they wrote about it 
was stating that this was incorrect. So think about all these factors. They know the who, the what, the where, and the when, and they still did it anyways. They lied to you on purpose. The book in the upper right corner is from the author who made this mistake. The monk who did this, that's where that's from. That's what that image is. The book to the left is the Watchtower's book. The images below it are directly taken from that book, stating that they knew these mistakes. They knew when it happened, who did it, why they did it, how they did it, and yet they still lie to you anyways. So the true question is, is why is Jehovah's Witnesses not called Yahweh's Witnesses? The reason? Money. Popularity.